Hey, and welcome to Technology Paul. Today, I want to share my experience with purchasing and unboxing a new Mac Mini that we purchased for our home office. But first, I must explain why a Mac Mini. Well, let me tell you in about three seconds after you click that like button, which really does help the channel. Thank you very much. All right, let's get into it. The short and simple reason for us to choose a Mac mini was to help us work on some special projects like this YouTube channel. See, I have a MacBook Air and so does my partner. These are great for browsing the web, doing schoolwork, looking at photos, watching Netflix, and any other light computing task you can think of. However, as you know, I recently started this YouTube channel and my partner has started blogging. So we decided to pick up a dedicated computer to work on these projects. Yes, we could have looked at a MacBook Pro to replace one of our MacBook Airs, but we felt that for most everyday tasks, we could continue to use our laptops. We also did some comparisons and determined that we could get comparable or better performance in the Mac Mini versus the baseline MacBook Pro at a more economical price. The model we chose is the base model Mac Mini. It goes for $9.99 in Canada. The specs are 3.6 gigahertz quad core, eighth generation Intel Core i3 processor, eight gigabytes of memory, Intel UHD graphics, and a 256 gigabyte SSD. I figured the quad core i3 would be a very nice upgrade over our current dual core processor in the MacBook Airs, which are a few years old. As far as the storage goes, the main thing most Macs have going for them is the SSD flash memory, which makes them very quick. The speed is the most important thing for me, not the actual amount of storage. 256 gigabytes is enough to keep the main types of applications and files on the computer. And then we just connected an external one terabyte hard drive to store all of our project files. And of course, from there, we can always add additional external storage, either USB 3 or Thunderbolt connectivity to make sure the data transfer is nice and fast. The buying experience. There's not much to say here. However, I do want to provide props to Apple for making it super quick and easy to get a new Mac. For those who don't know, Apple offers options when shopping online. You can order your Mac to be shipped at the usual speed of about seven to 10 days, or you can pick it up in store if it's a standard spec build. The only restriction is that they ask you to select a pickup time frame. That's pretty easy to do and there's lots of times available. Presumably, this is just to make sure they don't have a situation where everyone is showing up at the same time. Apple has offered this pickup service long before the current state of affairs and they're not the only retailer doing it. However, it just goes to show they were ahead of the game on this front, which makes purchasing their products easy and it minimizes contact. The unboxing. Okay, let's take a look inside. Start with the plastic on the outside. tab that you can pull on to get it up. Pulls out quite nicely there. Very compact unit. And the rest of the box here. This top section here, looks like we've got a power cable. There we go, put that there. And inside here, Started guide, and of course the trademark Apple stickers. And that is it. That's everything in the box. Pretty incredible. So let's take it out of here and get it set up. As I'm unboxing this, uh, just to show you the I/O on the back here. Of course, you got the spot where the power cable is going to go. Your Ethernet port for hardwiring your internet there, and you've got four 
USB-C ports, which are also Thunderbolt ports, HDMI, two USB-A ports, which are USB-3, and of course a headphone jack. The configuration. So now that I've got it all set up, I figured I should share the final configuration. This right here is our setup. I've set up the Mac Mini on the desk here. I've got a few things plugged into the back. First of all, I did run a CAT6 cable to the Mac, although it does have an airport card for Wi-Fi. Whenever possible, I certainly recommend hardwiring a desktop computer to get the best possible speeds, the most stable connection, and the lowest latency. Directly to the left of that, I have a Seagate one terabyte portable external hard drive. Although it's portable, it'll pretty much be a permanent fixture here. Fun fact, I actually lost the USB cable that came with the hard drive, so I ordered a new one on Amazon. It's Amazon Basics branded, because of course, you can get everything from Amazon Basics these days, and it works like a charm. Next, I picked up a very affordable set of computer speakers. These are the Logitech Z150 two-channel computer speaker system. I don't need anything fancy. However, they do output impressive sound for a mere $27. In the middle, we picked up the Acer AOPEN 27-inch 1080p monitor. We picked it up for about $200, although it looks like you can get it even cheaper now. There are less expensive monitors available, but we figured this is a good area to just go a little bit better quality, though it's not the top tier either. We've been very pleased with this monitor so far. Further down, we also picked up the Perix Periboard wired backlit keyboard for Mac. We purchased it for about $60. I don't think it was necessary to splurge on the Apple wireless keyboard with numeric keypad. Plus, these keys are satisfyingly more clicky than Apple's keyboard. However, trust me, the refined quality of an Apple product beats out others any day. The backlighting on this particular keyboard leaves something to be desired. That said, if you're looking for this particular keyboard, it looks like Perix may have replaced it or updated it. My old purchase link takes me to a new product, the Perix Periboard Wired Backlit Aluminum Keyboard. The new version also includes a couple of USB ports, which is nice. And we also picked up Apple's Magic Mouse. I knew I wanted the Magic Mouse because I'm a big swiper between desktops, and this mouse makes that so easy. Some quick final notes. At the time when we purchased this whole setup, it all came out to roughly $1,481 Canadian. It is not the fanciest setup, and I'm sure I'll have some comments about that. However, I'm just getting started on this YouTube journey, and I don't yet have a workflow that demands anything more. Last note, I just want to talk about warranty for a second. Most Mac reviews don't say much about it. Now, I do believe that Apple offers a high quality warranty program called Apple Care. It's better than most others. However, I wouldn't recommend it on a desktop Mac, and I didn't purchase it for the Mac Mini. Generally, if you're gonna be purchasing a MacBook where you'll be moving it around a lot, banging it around in a backpack or something, I would get it for sure. Even if it doesn't get physically damaged on the outside, that can put a lot of strain on the internal hardware. But for a Mac that I've plopped on this desk and it's unlikely to move for years, I don't think it's necessary. Especially now that most Macs have SSD available, you've reduced the risk factor for a failure. It's still possible something could happen and you should make up your own mind. I'm just telling you my decision-making process. Anyways, that's it for today's episode of Technology Paul. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.